My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to use Java Records, the new language feature, together with Quarkus and in general in your enterprise code. There are a few use cases where Java records are really helpful besides from in your plain Java code. And we want to have a look at what benefit they bring us in our Quarkus application. So here I have a Maven project for my Quarkus playground that uses Quarkus in a recent version and Java in a recent version, at least JDK 16 for records. And what I want to do now in this video, I don't want to talk about coffee but about cars so now we have some cars examples where we say well um, if we would like to have a method this is now the first example where we can use records sort of as transfer objects that are then exposed via um, rest and for example mapped to json so what we can do here we can say well for example give us a list of whatever cars or something like this so um, well this car will be just defined in a second and we say something like well just for a very basic example, create a list of uh, just some static car definitions. And what is a car? Well, a car should be a record that we now create that then has something like very basic, um, a color, just a colored car. Okay, so then we can say, create a red car and maybe a blue car. So what this does already is to say, well, I create this record that is just an object that has this, um, final field of a color and then here um, red or blue. Okay, then what we can do just in our uh, project is to say um, quark is def, please run this in our quark is development mode and then go to localhost 8080 slash cars and then see once this is up and running that this already works. Okay, so what did this do? This just out of the box mapped this to an object and has well, this property, which if you think about it makes a lot of sense and this is the default behavior because what this does, I'm using Quarkus here with JSON B and the JSON B declarative JSON mapping just looks at all of the public uh, properties here and that is that public method that is defined in a, a record for, for this field color and this is then being used. Of course, you can change that if you need to. If you say, well, um, this is the color and then it should be, I don't know, uh, property car color, for example, for some reason. So you would like to change this. And of course, you can annotate uh, these fields here or these uh, field header definitions in your record and then say, well, this should be a car color instead or with a um, lower camel case or snake case or whatever you want to define here. So you can, of course, override them here. OK, so that is possible. You can also say that has, for example, an ID so we define um, a car here with some specific ID one and two. And then this ID then, of course, would be um, emitted here as well. So we have a color and an ID. Or if you say, well, this shouldn't be there, JSON be transient. This also works as you would expect it. And then you again just get the color and you can well just um, uh, change this a little bit how your record will be defined. Usually this wouldn't be done that often. Why? Because that's the whole point of defining a record for just the representation that you actually want. So you will define your record, especially if you define them as a part of an API, as your JAXRS uh, resource, already in the way how you would expect your JSON to look like. So of course this makes a lot of sense, but still you can change them just with these annotations. So that is the first, first examples where record really shine, um, especially just with the default behavior of having this uh, public accessor that you say, well, define a records type in just the structure that I want for my uh, system boundary for my API methods here. And then it will be emitted as JSON, for example. So that's already really helpful. Let's have a look at another example when it comes to persistence. So this is a little bit more interesting and a little bit more tricky to get right. Um, another example where um, records are just specific for enterprise Java or for our Quarkus application here. Why? Well, because in your Java code, if I say I just define a car and I can use them just normally, you know, the, your Quarkus application, that's just a Java application. Of course, you can uh, use records as always, like just in your Java code. But now what I would like to have, I would like to have a persistence example with cars. For that, we change, first of all, this car into a class. Why? Well, for that reason that we say, does it make sense to use um, 
a record as a JPA entity? And the answer is no. And if you think about it, that also doesn't really make sense because an entity is by definition an identifiable you know, entity in your uh, database and typically something that you would like to interact with and change and I, um, identify with an ID and uh, modify some, uh, some methods. There are a way uh, ways how to make this work with a record as well but just the fact that uh, it also is final per default that doesn't work with the jpa specification and things like that usually um, we use this more as a value object which is what i want to show you so what we can say um, now let's change this whole example and say the car should be an entity so it has by definition some sort of id where we say okay that should be a generated value of for example just a simple long i not in id and that should also have let's say we had this i make all the fields uh, public now we had this color and then maybe now it's getting a little bit more interesting uh, we have something like well an enum or now a record because these value objects if you think about the main driven design really makes sense from a java perspective well for these records or also for enums, right? So that always makes sense, but an enum here in JPA is nothing new that has been um, working for a long time. But assuming we have something like, a, well, let's uh, call it a car tire specification. So these car tires, if you all know a little bit about cars, uh, we can say a car tire specification should just, they have usually some um, numbers and letters written on the tire have usually some some size some speed uh, definition and things like that so you can uh, check this out you can have a look at the wikipedia page if, if that is interesting let's say we have something like a tire speed rating um that would be a speed rating and then something like an uh, in width like the width of the tire and that should be enough for us so there is more more to it but that's fine this actually will be an enum so you can check this out <laughs> If you're interested in Wikipedia, we define these uh, numbers. So that's, I think, 180 uh, kilometers an hour, um, up to 240 kilometers an hour and more than that. So there are different letters for different things, but assuming this makes sense here. So we define this, and then of course that wouldn't be uh, a class, but a record. So we define a record here of this tire specification. Okay, so for this, from a domain perspective, that will be a value object. You don't care which object here you get as long as the value is the same. So assuming that makes sense. So we say something like um, public, you know, the tire type or something like this. Um, we call it like that. So the tire type that is being used there. And here you see my ID already complains. Well, that is now a basic attribute and you wouldn't know what to do with it. Okay, a mapping table doesn't really make sense here because it's not the tire is not an entity. What you would do, while it depends, you can have some attribute converter and then changes into some way, or you say this would be an embeddable um, or an embedded um, type, and this can then be embeddable, where you say, okay, that uh, would then be um, embedded in some way. Okay, with this, and again, we can annotate uh, these fields here we can for example say this should be a string enumerated enum so that just the string value the value will be there as a string um, this basic uh, field is also available we can say you know optional false something like this uh, we can do the same thing on the first field so you know as you see you can just annotate these as follows and then say well that then should be accessed from you know your code here Okay, let's change this a little bit. Let's say, well, the car is uh, then again emitted from a car repository that we're gonna create. So this uses the panache uh, way um, of creating such a car repository. So you can check this out. This is quite interesting, uh, this way of doing things with a panache repository for car. So that's already sufficient that we can say, return a repository, um, list all cars. And that's it in our database. And of course, in order to create something, we say, well, create a post method, um, something like um, create a car. And what we're gonna do is as follows that we say, well, create a car that should be, um, that should have the color, let's say red, and that should have um, a tire specification of whatever we have, speed rating, Z and 
to five millimeters or something like this and say okay that is now uh, the point and then let's make this a little bit nicer let's have a jax rest response let's say return response created with a uri of um, cars and then an id that then should be set once we said uh, once we say repository persist persist this car please okay so then this should be uh, the case that we use this as follows and then what we need to do well we would now also usually let's make this a little bit nicer i wouldn't have this directly in the jaxrs method but outsource that into a new class or sort of business boundary that we call cars and where we then say okay um cars um well list all cars or find all cars or something like this where we say okay please create a method here from that and the other method should there should be there here as well where we say um cars create car so that can be um, returned here as well we're going to use the repository now in this other class just a very tiny refactoring and saying okay this car should be returned here So that's it. Okay, in order to make this work, uh, what I would need to do, I would need to annotate this with add transactional, obviously, otherwise the persistence wouldn't work. Okay, let's try this out. I'm gonna use now, I'm gonna restart quickly my application. This should just be a warning that the um, tables already exist. And then let's have a look at finding the cars. And here we already see, okay, there's a problem. Let's see what's going on here. If we would like to load the cars and it says, well, um, this particular type tire doesn't have a default constructor. So this already is, well, some sort of hack now or a little bit workaround if you say, well, this tire, uh, because that is not quite supported yet or not as nicely as it could be in JPA, um, this doesn't have a default constructor. Well, we now could define one as, as to say, okay, we can define a tire that then calls, well, this other uh, constructor in a chained way where we say, okay, this would be now like just null, which looks a little bit ugly, but in fact, this works. We can say, okay, now we can have um, our cars and load them from the database uh, from cars that have been created before. So um, I prepared a little bit of an example of, um, let's have a look at my playground pro project of a database that already was running for this uh, playground project. I can, um, stop this again and run the database in a new way where we say okay please uh, just restart the application that it's empty and we're gonna have a look at the cars how they are being created so let's list the cars one more time now this should be empty and now we say create um, a car here the post that then should let's look at that again create a car one and two and now the cars should be here and saying, okay, interesting, we have a red car with an ID and this tire specification. So now you saw that this already works when we say, well, we would like to have this embedded type of a tire type and then um, using this record as such. Okay, how does this look in the database? I have this uh, running here. I can say um, localhost, let's have a look with the default credentials. So we have can ignore the uh, coffee orders one we have this car uh, table where we say well um, please see how this looks like and we have our color our speed rating and our width so that is the tire width and this tire speed rating we can change the uh, column name so it's a little bit more clear uh, which then has these uh, fields here so if we have a look select from cars then we see, okay, we have a car with this color and the tire speed rating and the tire width. Okay, so that already works. We could use uh, these records as embeddable um, types, if that makes sense, which here is a little bit of a hack. You can even make this uh, private that is not um, standard uh, conform in the uh, JPA, but it works in Hibernate with Quarkus. 
uh, where we say, okay, we already have these sort of uh, specifications. So that's one thing where you can use uh, records together with uh, JPA as these embedded uh, types. But there's another way where it might even make more sense if you think about it from the perspective that you say, I have specific queries in JPA that then just use and return specific things based on our needs, on our use cases, where then the return type will be defined by um, a record. Okay, this is now a little bit more specific where we say, for example, uh, find all of the color and tire combinations, whatever that makes sense. So we say have a specific query that then returns a specific type as I want that. So in this case, usually these are then not entities because for entities that would be simple, but some specific you know types of results. For that, let's have a look how to do this. We can have a look in our car repository and say, okay, we um, define an own uh, method here. For example, a set of, I call this now color and tire combination whether or not that makes sense, right? That then we say find uh, color tire combinations that then would be um, defined as, in our case, a record again, where then we say, okay, that's a job util set. And this combination should then just be, well, of a color and this tire type. So here, this is also, again, um, a record so that's a nested record already it also would work obviously with just plain um, other types and then we say okay how to do this um, we can use the entity manager here and say well now please create a query and that's kind of cool we can say let's do this in a java text block we can say uh, select and then we can have this in a um, JPA uh, query here, select new, and we can actually make a new um, color tire combination from this particular field. So you would, um, depending on your setup, need to qualify this with your package type. So we can say new color tire combination of whatever have you, for example, um, color car dot color and Let's just continue writing this in a second so we get the uh, auto completion from the IDE um, from um, a car C. So we say, well, we fetch this and then you already see the highlighting of my IDE and you can even use the tire type. You don't have to go for the um, embedded um, individual properties. You can just use this C.tire type where then say, okay, this new, this will actually create uh, this particular uh, type. Okay, and that should then be of this uh, class color tire combination, where you say get the result here as a stream and uh, map this to a set. So um, assuming this makes sense, where we return that, and then we say, okay, you know, please uh, create this as such. And now we're going to use this method, uh, and we say um, public uh, set of color tire combination find all color tire combinations, which then should return this whole thing based on your uh, repository, which then would be used in our resource. So we can say get uh, with a path colors tires, something like this. And again, this works quite nicely. Why? Because it's again just this record that then will be uh, just, um, well, emitted as uh, JSON. And that should already work for us. Cars invoke this method again, that then will be passed to a repository and that should be it. Okay, let's see if this works. Um, if we say this, these were our cars, okay, that's still the same. And if we say uh, cars slash colors tires, and now we have only one combination because all of the cars have the same. So if we, we say we're going to create uh, one more car with red and then we change this. So a blue car will be created one and two. So now we should have a few red cars and a few blue cars. And then let's see what is the color and uh, attire combination. And here just 
this combination will be these two tuples. And this already again has the same um, output just as a record here with a nested JSON object. So you can even mix and match that. So this is quite helpful if you have some um, database um, results, some queries where you would like to have a custom result types where this is really helpful to use a record for. Why? Because quite often they change a little bit. You want to have a specific structure based on your needs and then you don't need to define uh, classes uh, for all of them, which of course um, you can but sometimes a record uh, makes a lot of sense here and then again it's nice that just out of the box this works quite uh, nicely with this json declarative mapping which of course you could uh, change as well uh, but here you see how that works uh, quite nicely um, with records and this jpa or panache uh, way of using um, this persistence. So these were a few examples of how to use um, Quarkus and Java uh, records uh, together. If you're more interested in effective Quarkus development, just in general, uh, on this broader topic, you can check out um, a video course that I have linked down below. And if you found this helpful and entertaining, then I would really appreciate a like. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.